Okay, welcome everyone. I'm gonna do a closing market wrap video. The market just closed 10 minutes ago. And I, there's some really important stuff to really look at in the stock charts. So I'm gonna point those out. And then also I wanna just do a, a follow up on some of the trade ideas from this morning. And uh, there's another trade idea that I, uh, I didn't cover. So I wanna point that one out because it looks really juicy. I think that's a, a good one for everyone to kind of pay attention to as well. Before I get going though, guys, you know, these videos typically get about 2,000 views or so. You know, I've got over 11,000 subscribers and each video gets about 2,000 views, but I'm only getting about two to 300 likes per video. That's less than 25%. You know, I'd really appreciate if I can at least get 500 likes per video. You know, if you're watching the video, there's 2,000 of you, you know, let, let, hit the like button, you know, help me out. You know, I'm throwing out trade ideas. I mean, if you, I'm making money on these trade ideas, so if you know, I don't know if you're taking them or not, but if you're looking at them, they're, they're profitable, and and so the least I can ask for is is a hit a little thumb button. That's that's you know you're you're putting money in your bank in your bank account potentially, hit that thumb button. I'd appreciate that. All right, so getting into it, let's look at the cues. One thing I want to point out, something that's interesting today. So I'm going to zoom in on the hourly. Again, watch my video from this morning if you're curious why I think the market's gonna go lower. But I am looking at the Qs going down. Next level of support about 311. All right, that's the zone right in here. You can see we held support. We also held support right there. So I'm looking at us coming back down to there. All right, that's, that's the high probability move. I think probably lower, but for now, we'll just watch this 311 area. But something I wanna point out, look at the price action today. All right, we had this level at 324.50, which is a level of, you know, it, it's a support resistance level. Well, I wanna point out, I wanna pop open my trading program here and show you guys the price action. So here's my chart on the Qs. This is just a one minute chart that we're looking at. But again, here's that level. What I, you know, I always come into my execution program and mark out my key levels, especially on the one minute. So there it is. You know, this is about 324.30. I had it at 324.50. Again, you know, on the one minute, you might be, you might, you know, it's going to usually show a little bit differently, but close enough. You know, it's basically right in here. Look at the price action today. There's, this is a breakdown of the level, right? That we broke down, came back in for a back test, chopped around, and then failed right into the close. So again, you know, that just shows that that level was a valid level and it actually got rejected selling off into the close. I think we're heading lower tomorrow, probably with a gap down overnight. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and then going back to the chart here, you know, there it is, 324.50, you can see we sold off. So it doesn't mean we can't gap up and chop around some more, but looking at the daily, looks like we, we had the first leg down right here, a little bit of a, you know, back test and then starting to sell off. So I'm looking for lower prices tomorrow. Uh, I think we'll get it. Probably going to come in the form of a gap down. Uh, and yeah, again, by the time it starts gapping down and selling off impulsively, you know, that's not the time you want to be shorting. I always teach that and I talk about that in my videos. You know, you want to short into resistance. When things are moving up and things look, you know, like they're recovering, if you're long, that usually keeps the longs in their trade. They, they think, oh, you know, I'm getting my money back. We're going back up. And if you're, you know, and then and then shorts that are hesitant, they don't short. And then when you gap down, that's when they're like, oh, I should short. We're selling off. Everything is bearish. Well, yeah, it's obvious at that point. All right. You want to short when it's not obvious uh, because the thing is, it's just how markets work, right? When you gap down, the longs start exiting their positions and the shorts are capturing gains. Um, you got to get ahead of that move. You don't want to be, you know, positioning after that move. You want to be positioning when that move is taking place so you can make money on it. You can profit on it. So again, 311, looking at that one. SPY, you know, rejected at its at that trend line, that green trend line. If you look at the daily, that just comes off the March 2020 lows right there. Zooming in, you know, we held support, held support. There's your breakdown or sell signal, your back test, and, you know, starting to move down again you know not impulsive yet when you know but i suspect if we get more selling or gap down we're going to start to you know flush out and run down uh spy you know next level supports about 400 i think um we also have this trend line right here which we got to get through which is about 405 uh which is the big weekly trend line 
if you look at the weekly, coming off the 2009 lows, there's your weekly trend line where we held support all through here. We broke it trend in 2018, back test in 2019, COVID drop, Fed induced pump all the way up for another back test and an overshoot. And so again, we got to break down from there too. Uh, we, if we just run down to there and hold, we could bounce and can continue higher. So, but if we break that level and on a weekly chart, if we get a weekly close back below that, I'm going to see this overshoot right here as a false breakout. And that's likely going to mean we're going to get a lot lower prices. Till I see it, we'll, uh, we'll just take it day by day. And IWM, again, getting rejected off its resistance line right there. That comes off your March 2020 lows. Nice clean up trend line right there. Negative divergence telling me that we're likely going to break trend. We did break trend right here, and we're back testing. So that's an objective area to short, you know, on the back test of the trend line, getting rejected. We could gap up tomorrow and continue to back test, or we could start to sell off. But in the long run, or I guess the medium run, the, the trend, I believe, will be lower. So whether it's, you know, slightly higher and then lower, or whether it's just lower here, I still think we're heading lower level of support, 205, next level of support, which I think is probably the, the target, about 193. All right, that looks like a pretty objective area. Okay, so that's the broad markets, and that's how we close, but it's just interesting to see the market get rejected, especially Q's right at that, that trend line today. So I wanted to point that out. Deer, all right, I talked about this one, and I didn't point it out in the morning video, but I wanna point it out now. Uh, we've got, there, there's, it, the trade hasn't played out yet. It's, I think it's just getting set up. I took a short on it today, because I, to me it looks like it's good to go to the downside, but here's Deer. You've got an uptrend line from the March 2020 lows. Nice clean uptrend line, just lots of reactions along that trend. You have up here, bearish divergence. So. You have divergent high right there. See the see the lower momentum, all right? Higher price, slightly higher price, lower momentum, all right? Price was diverging from momentum. That's why it's called a divergent high. So then that tells you, okay, the trend's about to end or likely to end. Let's look for a break of trend line support. There's your sell signal right there. That candlestick, you know, because this wasn't that impulsive. Yes, you broke, but it wasn't that impulsive. And that's what I pointed it out. Yeah, I didn't really like it. But we broke here and still not that impulsive. This one, though, that's an impulsive breakdown right there. Big red candle breakdown. And, and then we've been chopping around since. But you can see today another big red candle straight down. So we got some support. And that's this is why I'm pointing the trade out because I still think it's a relevant trade. Um, I don't know what this line here is about. Let me... Um, yeah, I don't know. Kind of a, you know, this charting program can sometimes be weird. All right, we got trend line support right here at 366.50. You can see that we basically held, we held it here, here, here. Lots of tags of that right there. Throw this stupid line out of here. But we've got trend line support at 366.50. Or it's horizontal support. We broke trend. We're going horizontal. So here's the thing. A break of that, that's your next sell signal, all right? We could chop around, we could run up and back test. There's all kinds of stuff, things that can happen, but the trend, the uptrend is has been broken and we're now sideways uh, and we're looking for downward price action, all right? This is the negative divergence tells me we're likely going to see a you know correction or something in this. And so that would be your next sell signal. I got short of it, I got short today because uh, I think we're going to get that probably tomorrow, but we'll, we'll see. All right, so three that, that's your trade. First level of support, 317.78. Next level of support that I've got looks like about 265.61. All right, so high probability that if you break this, you're going to hit this level of support, and then you probably bounce, and then maybe you work our way lower. All right. Uh, but definitely high probability on that one. And if we break, let's say we break tomorrow from that level, it's a move of about 13%, all right? So should be swift and I like it as a trade setup. Let's uh, review Winnebago. Um, again, there's your sell signal. I pointed it out in the morning video. We had that support at 7350 uh, area that came back to there. That was former resistance right there. There resistance broke above, then it was support. Then we broke up down, and that's a big, nice, impulsive sell signal. Um, 
And this was actually a sell signal here, but you hadn't broken the trend line. See the trend line from the March 2020 lows right there? So that was still intact. So you sell off, you hit the trend line, you bounce. But we broke the trend line, especially right here. There's your sell signal, pretty impulsive gap down, followed by more selling. Uh, and then you hit your trend line, your horizontal support, and today we break that. So support has all been broken in this. So high probability we go lower. First level, so next level of support is about 66, 75 or so. You got the 200 days slightly below. So I think I think you're likely on the first break, you're probably gonna run down and hit that 200 day, maybe uh, bounce from there. Next level of support about 60, 61. So the way to trade it, you know, the way that I'm likely gonna trade it is we're gonna run down here and start to cover our trade uh, on that initial potential bounce. We could even break straight down to this level, 60, 76, and then bounce. Uh, so those are things to watch. And then you've got a support level right down here at about 46, 47, we'll call it another support level. But you're likely gonna get some kind of a bounce or a consolidation in this area. Um, but so far, so good, down 5% today, uh, looking good. And, and guys, I talked about the VIX trade that I was taking the other day. I did take some VIX positions the other day looking for, you know, really looking for a bounce. Um, and it, it's all based off the SPY, right? I, my, I always trade the VIX based on the SPY. If, if the SPY looks like it's about to sell off, then the VIX should spike. And usually the way it, it works out is on that initial realization that when everyone realizes that that there's going to be a correction that's when you see the surge in the VIX and that's typically where I take my profit on the VIX so the way I took it well looking at the VIX right now we do have some resistance right here at about 22 uh, and we're bouncing up into that today we also have bullish divergence showing up on the VIX uh, so the way that I'm trading it is, because you can't really buy the VIX, but you can buy things like VXX. So here's what I'm looking for. It doesn't mean it's going to play out, but I see this as a bounce here uh, on the VXX. We, we pull back, but you can see the low that we just put in. It's a higher low. All right, so here's your low. Here's your higher low. And, uh, and I'll point something else out here in a second. And then I'm looking for a move maybe, you know, I don't know where it's going to go, but maybe it runs up to here or potentially up to 64.50, all right, uh, or 57.88. So I'm looking for some sort of surge in the VIX uh, just above these highs, basically, above 50 bucks, looking for a, a new high right there. So I'll probably take profit on that move if, I, if it shows up. Another thing I want to point out, guys, is bullish divergence, guys and girls, people. Uh, bullish divergence here. See that right there? See the RSI and the PPO? See how it's turning up? All right, momentum is starting to build in this instrument here, and this was a divergent low. All right, you made a new low, but on higher momentum. All right, so we have bullish divergence. We've got the SPY looking like it's about to sell off. We've got this thing looking like it's about to pop. All right, so I took a position in it. It's profitable as of today. Uh, and so, you know, we'll see how much more it wants to run. Follow up on Toll Brothers. I, I actually, in this morning video, I showed Toll Brothers in the chart and it just looked too good that I had to take a short position on it. it it's close, you know, I didn't get it at the perfect entry, but I got it pretty good. Uh, so Toll Brothers, nice clean up trend line right here on the daily chart. And you can see we've just been grinding higher as I zoom in, but bullish di or bearish divergence. There's a divergent high. See the momentum right there? Lower high in momentum, higher high in price. Price was that diverging from momentum. So you look for a break of trend line support. All right, there's your sell signal, your break of trend line support. You break, you back test. Now, you, now we continue the uh, downtrend. All right, and there we bounces along the way. I haven't quite you know, done all my homework on the chart. It looks like there's a potential support level right in here around 58, 28. Um, but this looks like a much better support level right there at 50, 52. And that would be my target. Whether we get little bounces in here, 50, 52, you got the 200 day moving average, uh, likely gonna get a bounce there. And, uh, and then if you break that, you know, potential to get down to 40, 73, 
Um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna. That's all I'm really gonna call out for right now is those two levels. But you can see today down three percent looks good. Well, I'm expecting some more downside tomorrow. And I'll wrap up, I guess, with this one BYD because that you know I'm just trying to point out the the things that are kind of interesting and and the trades that have been uh, the new trades I've been talking about. Uh, looks like we're bear flagging. That's what I see in BYD. BYD, nice clean up trend line right there. Uh, broke trend with a divergent high. There's your negative divergence. Broke, and we're bear flagging. So I would say, from my perspective, there's your flag. You just measure the flag, uh, the break. And yeah, somewhere right in there, probably, you know, probably 5086 would be the projected target. Uh, it could be a little higher, but yeah, about 5086. Uh, we also have a support level right there at 5546. I'd say it's a very high probability we get to, at least to that, but um, you know, probably shooting for this 5086 as well. Um, from where we're at now, a break to the first level is about a drop of 9%. And again, it doesn't look like much in my chart. I know that a lot of people, really, they're like, dude, that uptrend's huge, and you're only talking about this little move. But again, I use log scaling. If you take away the log scaling, you can see the move I'm looking for. You know, there's your first move, and there's your second. And, you know, it's an exponential drop. So if you take away the log scaling, the, the you know, it, it will look like a bigger drop. Here's an example of, uh, of that, something like Peloton is a clean example. So on log scaling, you'll see that, you know, the drop, there's the, there. this was my short entry right here, and the drop, you know, fell all the way, has so far fallen to 79. And if you roll out, you're like, oh, the huge uptrend line hasn't really pulled back that much, but you pull off the log scaling, it's a lot different. You know, you can see it's a big drop. I mean, this thing's really been uh, about cut in half. You know, you've lost, you, you know, if you took it, and again, look at the volume, you know, look where all the volume came into this Peloton, huge volume all through here, you know, on this run, uh, you know, lots of volume spikes all through here. So a lot of people that didn't exit the trade, they're actually underwater and have lost money. Um, the people that are still in the money are the low volume, you know, when it's low volume down here and they've been, they were buying it up. But after it starts to run, this is where most of the people get into trades. And so they're underwater. Uh, they're, they're losing money. So just something to, to notice. Log scaling, that's the key. Again, uh, take my course. I teach all this stuff, and it's going to give you guys the skills to, to do. Uh, you know, to, you're going to be be you're going to be a better trader for it. All right, I can, I can guarantee you'll be a better trader for it. I can't guarantee I'll be able to help you control your emotions or your position sizing or all the all the soft skills that often, you know, emotions really get the better of you. But if you follow the play by plays and I and I do have a, uh, a check sheet in that in that list that really sets the trade up for you, gives you, you know, check this, look for this, always examine this. Uh, and if you follow that, you're going to be a, a better trader for it. And, you know, you got to work on the emotional part of it. And that just comes with experience. But when you see this strategy, you see it start to work. I think it will really help. Um, here's MGM. I want to wrap up with this one. We're watching for a sell signal on this. We don't have it yet. Um, you do have a negative divergence right there. Big, clean negative divergence. Uptrend line right there. Uh, we're waiting for a break of trend. We got a little break yesterday or the other day. It wasn't impulsive. And I pointed that out. I said, you know, it's not good enough. You know, I don't, it's not a good enough selling. Um, and then they ramped it back up. And so we're still above trend. We're waiting for that break of trend line support. Uh, if we get it, then that'll be a sell signal. First level of support about 31.76, and the 200-day will probably be in that area. And then next level of support, next major level of support that I can see is probably really all the way down here at about 24 down to 23.50, somewhere right in there. So those will be the two targets on this one uh, if we get the sell signal and and when we get it. So I'll keep an eye out for that. All right, guys, again, leave me a thumbs up. I'm trying to get over 500. I really need those, uh, you know, I need that encouragement. I'm throwing out trade ideas. I mean, the ideas that I threw out today, when I took the shorts, you know, they're all profitable by 2 to 3%, uh, and that's a good trade entry when you can enter something and you, you're profitable and it starts working right away because you got the good positioning. And that's what this channel is all about. You know, I'm pointing out trade ideas, trying to get, get you guys good positioning on trades that have high probabilities of working. I can't guarantee anything, and I'm not giving financial advice. Everything here is my opinion and how I see it in the charts. But 
Um, that's what this channel is about. So do your part. I'll do mine. Thanks. Catch you guys on the next one.